Assalamu alaikum viewers, good day and welcome to this special interview program from the Information Unit of the Borno State University. The Borno State University was established in the year 2016. However, since then, nothing much was done in terms of human resources and academic activities until the year 2019, specifically in March, when principal officers were appointed by the then Governor Kashim Shetima with Professor Umar Kari Sandabi as the pioneer vice chancellor. Interestingly, while other similar universities struggled to take off years after establishment, Professor Umar Kari Sandabi and his principal officers had ensured that the Borno State University takes off and commence academic activities that same year of their appointment, in fact, within only six months. So how was that feat achieved? How is the journey so far? What are challenges faced and how are these challenges being tackled? To answer this and many more is the Pioneer Vice Chancellor of the Borno State University in the person of Professor Umar Kalisanabe, who had just clocked four years of both academic and non-academic activities. Sir, good day and welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. As usual, I am Mohamed Umar Garkua. Thank you for joining us. Now, sir, how is it like to be the pioneer vice chancellor of a new university, especially at the time of COVID-19 pandemic? Um, it, it was actually very exciting and uh, at the same time challenging. Uh, at the time we were appointed, as you rightly said, the university got its license in 2016, but full takeoff was on 2019 at the appointment of the principal officers. Now, at the time of the appointment and inauguration of the management team, there was this insurgency problems where there were some sporadic incidents of insecurity in the state. There are also incidents of uh, criminalities and all that. So it was amidst this situation that we set out to see how we could take off. And thanks to Allah, we were able to navigate, uh, went to the NUC, got approval of 30 programs. We came and established four mega faculties with these 30 programs. So before we get to that, sir, uh, what did you find on ground on assumption of duty, especially on the site of the university? You see, we came, we met a temporary buildings uh, where we took off, and uh, immediately thereafter, a new government also came in under the leadership of Professor Babagana Omar Azulum, MNI, FNSE, GCON, became also heavily involved in trying to see the university, you know, have the befitting infrastructures. So he completed all the projects without delay, furnished all the buildings and the new buildings, and then immediately we, uh, we occupied those buildings and uh, we took off honestly without any challenge of accommodations of offices, accommodation of classrooms and uh, accommodations of you know even staff quarters so we were also grateful in that direction yeah but you know earlier you said COVID-19 yeah COVID-19 came it has also his challenges there was a complete lockdown but fortunately for us by the time the lockdown came, we have finished our second semester examination. And, and after the lockdown, we didn't lose any period. So there was no actually break for us in terms of academic calendar. Due to the COVID-19. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, one immediate challenge faced by administrators of a new institution is the takeoff, naturally. Mm -hmm. Now, here you are within six months into your appointment. You and your team were able to take off not only administratively, but most importantly, academically. How did you achieve uh, this field? You see, sometimes the main hindrance of this situation is funding. Mm. 
so fortunately for us the government adequately funded us and then uh, we got adequate funding and then we have a robust management team a team that is hard working and we handle these funds frugally so that it serves our purpose and that we did and that was how we were able to meet our demands effectively now so another tricky problem faced by boarding institutions is that of uh, both non-academic mm. and especially academic staff now how did you source your side that you were able to take off in october 2019 yeah you know by the time we came we were lucky mm. that we were also domiciled in my degree where university of my degree mm. is also domiciled we tried as much as possible to reach to a memorandum of understanding with the university of my degree and thereafter, for all these study programs, we got sabbatical and then we got visiting lecturers who honestly volunteered and they came here, we gave them the employment in these two categories for them to take off. But at the initial, we have been matched with Kashim Ibrahim College of Education, where most of our non-academic staff, you know, were sourced to come and then effectively we just give them some little orientation with the help of university of my degree uh, season administrators we, we engage few of them to can even give them the orientation so we had to uh, call university administrators to give them orientation in other words we orient them to meet our demands and that was how we source our non-academic personalities but by and large most of our academic staff were sourced from the university of my degree and other universities across the country we have quite a few of them and then in that direction we had entered into a memorandum of understanding with other foreign universities who were also giving us technical support and trying to see that this is how things are done and some advices and that was how we were able to you know we organize uh, seminars workshops and certain lectures through virtual i mean for our students and staff to you know uh, benefit these are some of these strategies that we took in order to effectively take off around that time now sir, i mean we know how many faculties you started with and uh, programs and of course number of students yeah at time. as i mentioned earlier mm. we have 30 programs but you see, to begin with, if you said you can create a lot of faculties, you will have some um, administrative challenges. But for convenience, we have to create four mega faculties. We have the Faculty of Science, we have the Faculty of Agriculture, then we have Faculty of Social and Management Sciences, and we have Faculty of Arts and Education. And these are the four mega faculties under which these 30 programs were uh, housed mm. and uh, using this thing we appointed deans and heads of departments and then we we, we took off uh, first our, our first admission even though we were given uh, 2000 carrying capacity we were approved but we were only able to get 674 or so uh, as first pioneer students mm. to take off and we matriculated that number mm. Uh, but subsequently, this number increased. The following year, we had to even look for attrition mm. to increase the number of mm. applications. Mm. Now, the student population mm, is almost hitting 5,000 uh, students. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, any plan for expansion or adding more courses? And if yes, mm. uh, what are these courses? Yeah, currently, we are engaged with the Nigerian University Commission NUC on establishment of the College of Medical Sciences, Faculty of Engineering. These are the two immediate faculties that we hope to start with the coming session. Mm -hmm. um, we have reached advanced stage. We have met all their requirements. We are just waiting for them to just give us a letter of approval to commence those programs. And uh, maybe in the two or three sessions to come. We have Faculty of Law, which is also based on high demands and requests mm. from the public. And we have some uh, 
highly specialized courses which we have to we are now studying them like aerospace like space engineering and all these things we are now currently studying them but by and large these are the two programs that we are looking for and 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 when we say college of medical sciences mm -hmm. i mean that is mbbs and its allied courses like pharmacy nursing and medical laboratory sciences and all that so these are all we have engaged the nuc and hopefully we are expecting approval from them as a first batch admission have been released when will the second batch be released and what happened to those who could not make it and yet wants to come to the Buenos Aires University to study? You see, the problem with admissions mm -hmm. now is we have released the first batch mm -hmm. and then we realize that um, uh, we just released 50% of our requirement mm -hmm. as first batch. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are now trying to sort out things to see that we don't make of our admissions. So, and now we have almost reach the current capacity and then uh, we are also because since our capacity could even take up, up to 3000 we are still requesting jam to add us a little more so that we meet the requirements of these students but in every year mm. even jam itself is aware that the number of applicants are much more than what what the universities could afford and so those that could not get admission this year mm. is hard luck mm. but they uh, let them not lose hope with the system they should also reapply next year through JAM because JAM is the only uh, organization mandated by the law to admit students into Nigerian universities not any other source not any other way mm. it's only through JAM mm. yes so uh, how about uh, the university's remedial program? How far so far? This remedial year program is to bring students together, those that have deficiencies in some of their courses, mm. which they could not make it at home. Mm. So you come, you retrain them, you give them additional training so that they should meet. In most cases, we put more emphasis on English and mathematics and maybe one or two of their choosing uh, future career choice so that we give them a lot of training so that by the time they sit down for WAEC, they will make those results and then when they sit down for UTME, mm -hmm. Unified Tertiary Institution Matriculation Examination, mm -hmm. then they will make the minimum score that is admissible. Mm -hmm. So that's why the remedial year program is there. And in most cases, our cap current capacity for the remedial year program is also is about 1,500 to 2,000. Mm. Yeah. And how is the response from? Because of the anomaly, the response is, well, I could say it's fair. It's not that um, they are responding heavily, mm. but it's fair. Yes. But you are encouraged to apply? For yes, the they are encouraged to apply for remedial. Those that don't have either English or mass or any of the subjects that you know guide their future career. Mm. Now soon sir, God's willing, Bosu will graduate his first year of student since it's almost four years now. Mm. Now so how feasible is that and uh, any time frame? Yeah, it's peaceful. Mm. You see our calendar is already out. Mm. Our calendar, the second semester ends by August or September mm. and by the time uh, October comes, the university would have approved mm. their results. And maybe November, December will be set aside as the convocation year uh, period. If there is no any uh, incident that brings break into the calendar, uh, God willing, we are hopefully expecting that our students will smoothly graduate around that time. Well, sir, let me go back to the issue of the Kashinuram College of Education. The major, how far so far? No, the major had been completed. Everything is now at the initial stage. We were asked to sit down to sort out uh, those academics that have the prospects mm -hmm. of going for further studies to do PhD or higher degrees and then those that could cope 
in uh, phase day retraining so that they will be fitted into the universities. Uh, we observe all those ones as academic staff. Mm. Those that had already PhD and they are lecturing there, mm. we move them only for us to reorient them, for them to see the educational system is different mm. with that of the university and the college. college. We have completely concluded all the issues. Now we are fully integrated with this merger. So it is a common knowledge that universities, be it federal or state, gets one assistance or the other from agencies and organizations like the TED Fund, MIPTA, etc. Mm. etc. Et what is the situation with the Bonasa University? Like the TED Fund that you mentioned, mm. it's a law, the law establishing the TED Funds agrees that universities are entitled to apply and be considered by the TED Fund for grants. And then if you have met the requirement of the TED fund, they have certain guides and regulations. And if you have mm. met those requirements and guidelines, they will admit you. Mm. And so far, so good, thank God, mm. they have admitted us, they have enlisted us. Mm. Um, for three years running, mm. we have been getting the intervention from the TED fund mm. effectively. Mm. And it has greatly helped us in trying to improve our infrastructure on campus. Mm. In that respect, we have to thank uh, the federal government, uh, the TED Fund itself, and the state government for making it possible for the state university. As part of their corporate social responsibilities, mm -hmm. they do offer help to tertiary institutions. Mm -hmm. And in that as, uh, situation, we seize the opportunity, we have to do an advocacy. This uh, gone at the era where the vice chancellor or the management sit down on, on civilian chair in his office and then expect grants from the state or the federal government just to run the university. So we had to go out mm. to make advocacy visits mm. to many of the organizations. In that respect, we have, uh, we have visited NIDA. They listened to us, they understood us, they identified with us mm. under the leadership of Professor Isa Alifantami, mm. who was then NIDA Executive Secretary. Mm. He granted us internet hub that is ICT center in the university they build us they equipped mm. all these things it is functional now mm. then when he became minister mm. he also helped us in, in getting a broadband internet facilities on the campus mm. uh, we are also grateful to him uh, Allah, only Allah will reward him for that assistance mm. and then NCC also mm. it is still under the communication ministry mm. They also help us with computers, with laptops, and then other facilities for us to enhance our educational pursuit. We are also grateful for them. Then we had to reach NNPC. NNPC is now currently building a center uh, for peace and strategic studies yes. on the campus. It is about 70% completion. So uh, we have visited uh, FIRS who in principles agreed to come and intervene. We have followed a lot of uh, personalities, individuals and everything. And then hopefully by the time response come back to us and uh, they are positive, we will tell you that we have got intervention from these philanthropies and for, or from these agencies. So, yeah. so I know you also visited NEDC. Any I just wanted to talk NEDC mm -hmm. As uh, when I want to talk about engineering, mm. the NEDC Nurses Development Commission mm. has one of the largest intervention that we have on the campus. Mm. Uh, is on the Faculty of Engineering. Mm. They have a site for uh, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and an auditorium. Mm. So I think we are very grateful, mm. very much appreciated to the managing director NEDC, Haji Muhammad Al Kali mm. Goni, who is also very keen to be providing the project by himself mm. from now and then. We are very grateful. Yes, I, I, I told you earlier about the NNPC. Mm. Uh, the managing director of NNPC, mm. Meleke, I received us in his office, assured us, and the project is now going on. We are also very grateful to him. Yeah. Yes, so still on intervention. How is the state government faring in its intervention in the university, both financially and structurally? The state government has tried its best. Mm. 
if you go around the country, there is no, I can say this without fear of contradiction, there is very few, if, if any, actually, uh, where state government has provided 70% of the facilities on the campus. If you follow, if you go through many of the universities, including the federal, 80% uh, of their facilities are funded by TEDFON, provided by TEDFON. But here in Borno State University, as of now, 80% or even 90% of the projects are funded by the state government. And the state government uh, is always ready, even we have been in, we talked with His Excellency that he is, he is ready to come and even build certain infrastructures for us uh, again. When the political dust settles, we are absolutely certain that he is coming to uh, build some of the requirements on campus. So the state government has been doing wonderfully well and you cannot appreciate what I am saying until you come visit the university, go around there and see our networks. Mm. And then uh, there is one federal agency that also help us, mm. which uh, let me not forget mentioning them, Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Mm. Federal Ministry of Agriculture under the uh, leadership of Minister of State for Minister of Agriculture, uh, Raji Baba Shauri, uh, OFR, he provided street lights to the universities and then currently he is engaged in trying to see how they could provide water to the university. Now sir, the state government is constructing a teaching hospital for the university. So also Ted Park is constructing College of Health Sciences. How far have they gone in that direction? Sir? Yeah, you know the teaching hospital is a project of the state government. Mm -hmm. Um, so far so good is going on, but I am not qualified to talk on that issue. Mm. But the, the commitment shown by His Excellency is so high that the building is almost at, uh, at the stage of completion. And uh, we have the College of Medical or Health Sciences is funded by the TED Fund, high impact grants. So it's also ongoing. Hopefully, we are expecting maybe towards the end of this year, mm. they we will all be completed. Okay. Now, sir, the NUC was here late last year for accreditation. Mm. May we know the outcome of that, if any? Yeah, you see, we have about 30 programs. Mm. We, we invited them, they came, they look at our programs meticulously, and at the end of the day, we got a 100% accreditation. Mm. Uh, and with 28 full accreditation. In other words, it is only after five years that they will be due for another accreditation. Then we have two programs for interim accreditation. Mm -hmm. That means that after two years, they will be eligible to for another accreditation. I think it is uh, one of the greatest feat the university is proud of, or the management is proud of. Uh, there are very few universities that apply for accreditation for all their programs and get 100% mm. Especially within such a short period. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Congratulations for that. Thank you. Now, sir. sir, most of you are students here of campus in spite of the long distance to school. Now what have you done or what are you doing to bring soccer to them in terms of hostel accommodation and uh, transportation? You see, we, when we came on board, uh, having realized the distance and uh, situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the government uh, helped us to build uh, two mega uh, students' hostels. Mm -hmm. And um, we have now capacity to accommodate the students. Mm -hmm. But you see, in this era, mm -hmm. not only you have the facility, but the second aspect you have to see how you can maintain the security and protection of these students. So we are now working very hard with the security agencies, mm. not only our internal security agencies, the vigilantes and all that, but we are working with the military, with the police, with the civil defense and the SSS, mm. the DSS, so that at the end, uh, when the students are on campus, mm. we would have established a full security cover. But hopefully, this academic session, we are going to commence accommodating the students.
Okay. What are the uh, transportation aspects? The transportation, you see, let's talk about it's just a privilege. It is the feeling of the management that let's uh, assist and uh, complement the efforts of the parents. So we have about uh, nine buses that f uh, that ferry students from the campus to the town and from the town to the campus every day. We uh, transport them free of charge mm. uh, to their nearest destination, mm. to their homes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, sir, before we go, what will you sir, consider as your greatest achievement at the, at the Vice Chancellor of the Bonus University? Well, uh, you said in briefly, mm -hmm. uh, my greatest achievement is that I came, there was no university mm -hmm. or no state university, there was nothing on ground. Mm -hmm. At the end of my tenure, I have a full pledge functioning, viable, virile and strong university on ground. I think this is one of the happiest moments in there. Like just in any way, I have a robust management that helped me to see that this aspiration is achieved. And by the time I leave this of, uh, the office, uh, we know that there is a university in existence. Not only a university, but a world-class university is on ground in Borno State. And this is a legacy and it's an achievement. That before I came, there was nothing like that. After I have left, there was something like that. So I think it's an achievement and I will be very proud of it. Yes. So finally, as you face yet another new academic session, what message or appeal do you have for government, your staff, parents and students? You see, um, for the government, yes, they have to be patient with us. They have to be tolerant with us. And then uh, we are seeking for more government interventions yes. and support, yes. like Oliver Twist. Mm -hmm. Uh, this should not be a problem to the government. Yeah, yeah. Mm. To the students, I think they should be up and doing. They are just privileged to have got a university with full support, with full facilities for them to do. Not any student can have this. Let them go and see uh, other universities across the country if they have this kind of facilities. So they should also take it seriously face their studies, and then uh, uh, meet their objectives. To your staff and who assisted you? Well, I thank the management. I thank them who are assisting me. I thank them very well. They are up in doing their hard working. I appreciate their efforts. Uh, I'm happy with them. And then when the whole, at the end of the day we take the credits, all of us will take the credits. And then each time you mention the name of any one of them, uh, you, they will say, yeah, he was part of the yes. story, yes. and uh, I appreciate them. I urge them also to put more efforts uh, in trying to see that the university wills and become stronger than it is now. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, well, that yeah welcome. Well, viewers, that is it from the information unit of the Bono University. Until next time, from the Vice Chancellor. Thank you very much. And for me, is. Thank you for watching. See you next time.